I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. Time now is 601. Dr. No. You're on mute, Dr. No. Do you like to go ahead and move to the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance? We can get started. Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. All right. Uh, item 1A, invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I'll turn it over to um, Board Member Hubert. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. For those who'd like to join us, join me. Uh, please bow your head for the invocation. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day and for this opportunity we have to meet and discuss the matters of the Conroe Independent School District. We invite thy spirit to be with us. We also pray for the leaders of this country and for the leaders of the, of the state and, the, and the, the school district itself. We ask that this COVID pandemic may be eased and that those that are suffering through it will find peace. We pray that this will all come to an end quickly and swiftly and that we may be able to resume life as we used to know it sooner than later. We are grateful for all that we have. We're grateful for the answering to the many prayers. And we say these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and through the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the uh, excuse me. Honor the Texas flag. <laughs> Thank you. I, yes, sir. I'm so used to looking at a flag, I don't <laughs> find the flag in here. <laughs> Thank you. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one nation, one under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huber. Uh we got through it. <laughs> Let's go. Item 1C, citizen participation. Uh, Dr. Noll, has any, Ms. Godfrey, has anyone um, registered or signed up to address the board? Yes, sir. Um, I will um, go ahead and move us to that. Uh, the format for public comment at tonight's board meeting has been adjusted as allowed for by Governor Abbott's order temporarily suspending portions of the Texas government code. As explained in the official notice for this meeting and on the district's website, Anyone who wanted to address the Board of Trustees during the public comment portion of the meeting was invited to submit their comments through the public comment form on the district's website. Mrs. Galatis will read each of the submitted comments aloud as written. The comments will be part of the recording of this board meeting and will be published on the district's website as a part of the recording. As always, please note that the board may only respond by providing specific factual information and the recitation of policy. The board is not permitted to deliberate on any item that is not on its agenda. Additionally, public comment is not the appropriate forum for bringing complaints for which a resolution is sought. Finally, in compliance with state and federal confidentiality laws, should any of the submitted comments contain information that could personally identify a student, unless that student is the person who submitted the comment or the parent or guardian of the named student, Mrs. Galatis will not read any part of the comment that would identify that student. Mrs. Gladys, would you please read the first public comment? Thank you, Dr. Null. The first, we have one comment tonight. I will read it as written. CISD School Board Meeting 51920, topic dyslexia. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Null. I am submitting this public comment in writing to again discuss dyslexia in our district. As a group of parents with dyslexic students, we have showed up at most board meetings this year to bring to you our concerns for our district's struggling readers. We have had meetings this year with key members of the district to negotiate more for all struggling readers, which has produced fruit. Recently, we were happy to learn our dyslexic students will begin receiving an additional 30 minutes of vital dyslexia instruction per week beginning next year. There has also been serious talk of the district offering dyslexia services during summer school, which is also pretty amazing for our population. A special thank you to Dr. Upshaw, Dr. Henry, and Tracy Landis for your work and guidance at these meetings. These three women are most certainly dedicated to our struggling readers and were willing to take a deep dive look into the needs of our population. 
The dyslexic students will benefit from these negotiations. Earlier this winter, member Scott Moore took time out of his busy schedule to attend a dyslexia event. We are so grateful to Mr. Moore for showing up to learn more about our dyslexic students' struggles and needs. Pages 99 and 109 in the Texas Dyslexia Handbook specifically discusses the responsibilities of the school board to our dyslexic population. I am attaching a link to the Texas Dyslexia Handbook at the bottom of my comments. Please take the time to review your role as board members in helping to ensure our dyslexic students' needs are met. Our parent lead dyslexia group is now one year old and represents 200 families with kids and teens that are dyslexic and dysgraphic. We exist to provide resources, encouragement, and education about dyslexia and related disorders to our families with struggling readers and writers. Our parent group continues to be supported by Decoding Dyslexia, a grassroots activist group. Our Decoding, Decoding Dyslexia state leaders are in our state capital regularly lobbying for our dyslexic students. I have also had the privilege of meeting with members of our local media. The more we bring awareness to dyslexia, the better life gets for our students. Remember, Dyslexia is not rare, it is very common, one in four are dyslexic. Our current concerns are, one, our dyslexic students receive no dyslexia intervention during distance learning. I believe copyright issues were at play. This is pretty unacceptable. We would like to know specifically what next year's plan B will look like if distance learning is again in our future. Two, will summer school be an option for our students this summer? Many of us would for sure sign our kids up. Three, who will be testing our kids for dyslexia next school year and what training are they receiving to do so? Four, special education teachers currently receive very minimal dyslexia training for our most severe struggling readers. We would like to see this change ASAP. Thank you for your time, Nicole May. And she leaves the um, uh, email or the address for our website as follows, file colon three backslashes, C colon backslash users backslash Chris uh, percentage sign two zero May backslash downloads backslash 2018 dash dyslexia dash handbook dot PDF. That concludes the comment. Was that's that's all that's registered. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that concludes our public comment. Article. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, gentlemen, next item on the agenda is consent agenda. I have received no request for anyone from any of you, you gentlemen to remove anything. Uh, that being said, I'll entertain a motion um, to accept the consent agenda as presented. I move to approve as presented. Second. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, all opposed, hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next item is item three, administration. Uh, Dr. Nall, if it's okay with you and all the same with the other gentleman, you want to move item um, seven up on the agenda or do you want to go through the agenda as presented? That, that would be wonderful, sir. If that is um, acceptable to you all, I know that we have uh, many excited people joining us online tonight that uh, anxiously await that, that item. I think they were more prefer to go through the agenda in its entirety before they get to that point. <laughs> just in case there are a few that prefer to get to it. Uh, gentlemen here, no objections. Let's move item seven up on the agenda. We're going to go with human resources. Uh, name principal of Powell Elementary. Dr. No, please. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So uh, we have quite a few uh, wonderful people that will be recommending to you tonight for hire. Uh, we'll start with Powell Elementary, as you recall. Uh, last month, we promoted Ms. Lisa Garrison, the principal of PAL, to be our director of elementary education, and that created this vacancy. Um, we're thankful for the, the uh, great team that served on the interview committee, and tonight we recommend uh, Ms. Erin Matei to be the principal of PAL. She has been uh, a longtime assistant principal for us at multiple campuses, uh, has long been thought of as a future principal. Uh, she is aware of uh, the Woodlands community and very familiar with the Powell community. I think that she will do a wonderful job uh, serving that community and continuing the great work that Ms. Garrison has done. So I would like to recommend uh, Ms. Erin Matei to be the new principal of Powell Elementary. So moved. Gentlemen, we have a motion. Second. 
properly seconded by Mr. Moore. It was it was the motion was made by Mr. Husband, properly seconded by Mr. Moore. Uh, all any discussion? No, sir. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposition? Hearing none. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Miss uh, Miss Matei. If if I forgive me if I butchered that, Doctor No. All right, we are joined now by Mrs. Matei, and um, you are welcome now to make some comments to the board. Thank you, and you got my name correct. Good job. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Noel, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you for trusting me, believing in me, and for being role models of great leadership. I will not take this blessing for granted. It is an honor to be recommended for this position, following in the footsteps of some amazing leaders, most recently, Mrs. Lisa Garrison. Mrs. Garrison, your dedication, love, and commitment to the Powell community does not go unnoticed. I promise to take great care of your Powell family. I would like to thank all of my friends, family, and previous coworkers. Thank you for being a listening ear when I had to share a great story about one of my school kiddos and for inspiring me to be a better educator. I am eternally grateful for your love and encouragement. To the staff, of, uh, staff members of Lamar and Bradley Elementary, thank you for all of the memories and lessons learned over the past seven years. I would like to recognize two women who have played an integral role in developing my leadership skills, Mrs. Mary Jane Curbo and Dr. Christine Butler. You have both saw the leadership potential in me long before I did. Thank you for your love, patience, and continued guidance. Lastly, I would like to, I wouldn't be who I am today without the love and support of my family. With me here tonight is my husband, Mark, who has also supported me and allowed me to chase my dreams. Thank you for encouraging me to keep going and for being my right-hand guy, making this amazing family possible. And to my three girls, Emma, Riley, and Abby, my greatest accomplishments, thank you for trusting your mom and following me everywhere my job takes me. You are what keeps me going. To my in-laws, Beverly and Bill Mate, who are joining via Zoom, Powell, I need to let you know we are a package deal. <laughs> Granddad Matei has been known to make some amazing displays of art. Thank you for both stepping in and always being willing to help in more ways than I have time to name. To my brother, Mark Smith, who is also here with us tonight, thank you for helping me develop thick skin as a child. I am so glad we have grown up and learned to get along as adults. I can't thank you enough for your guidance, advice, and endless knowledge of literally everything. To my dad, Kevin Smith, who's celebrating his retirement from being a school bus driver this week. And to my stepmom, Marilyn Farrell, who are both joining us via Zoom. Thank you for being great examples of hard work and perseverance. Your retirement is well-deserved. And I can't end without recognizing the greatest driving force in my life. I'm sorry, my mom. She was my first example of what a selfless leader and a friend looks like. She was my best friend my biggest cheerleader, and she was a blessing to every person that knew her. Even though she's no longer physically present, I feel her with me as I walk through each day. I know if she were here, she would be so proud of the work my brother and I have the privilege of doing every day in Connor ISD. In the words of Colin Powell, a dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. I am so excited, eager, and ready to begin my journey as a Powell Panther. I'm committed to, to learning about the Powell community and to wholeheartedly invest in the future of the students and staff at Colin Powell Elementary. Thank you guys so much. Wow, congratulations. 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 Awesome. Woo, congratulations. What a way to start. That was beautiful, Aaron. <laughs> Thank you. Great job. Powell is indeed in great hands. Uh, you have some huge shoes to fill, but I'm sure you'll do a phenomenal job. Thanks a million. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, let's move on to item 7B, name principal of Colston Tuff Elementary. Dr. No. Yes, sir. Thank you. We're, before we get to the naming of the principal, we want to take a, a little bit of a uh, diversion if we can. Uh, we have the, the, uh, uh, the, opening at Colson Tough because we had our principal there move to a new position. And although it was a, uh, a lateral move, so I was able to make that by transfer, we didn't need to come to the board to make the transfer. Uh, we wanted to give her an opportunity tonight to be celebrated. And um, so Ms. Sean Cresswell was formerly the principal of Colson Tough. She is moving into the position of director of curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And we're real proud of Sean, and she joins us now, and we would like to give her an opportunity to say a few words. Ms. Cresswell? 
Thank you, President Williams, members of the Board of Trustees, and Dr. Knoll. I want to thank each of you for this incredible opportunity to serve our district as the Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. I began my career in CISD, it's hard to believe, 20 years ago. I just got my 20-year pin, thank you, as a teacher at Buckaloo Elementary. I was assistant principal after that at Mitchell Intermediate and have been the principal at Colson Taft the past six years. I have loved every minute of every position I have ever had in our district. I have been part of amazing school families and have been surrounded by staff members who lead with a heart in all that they do. At this time, I would like to thank my very supportive family, my husband, Steve, my son, Billy, and daughter-in-law, Morgan, my daughter, Sarah, my daughter, Grace, my son, Jack, and watching from Chicago, Illinois, my best friend and superintendent, Dr. Lori Mach. I have had so many people that have mentored me in our district, and I can't go without saying a special thank you to Ms. Linda Ross, who is the first person who believed in me and encouraged me to go into administration. Mrs. Paula Klopeski, a wonderful principal at Mitchell Intermediate, Dr. Debbie Phillips, Dr. Shelley Winkler and Dr. Edith Upshaw. All of these people have mentored me and encouraged me throughout my professional career. I'd also like to thank all of the students, families, and staff at Colson Taft. They have embraced me, supported me, and loved me over the past six years and have allowed me to do such great work alongside of them. So an extra special thank you to my Colson Taft family. We say once a Titan, always a Titan. As you may know, my father passed away this past month and he left a legacy behind and that legacy is the importance of giving and serving others. He taught me to remember that we find joy in everything we do by selflessly serving. And I'm thrilled to serve CISD in my new position. I promise to make all of you proud and I promise to always look at every child as if they were my own to do what's best for all kids in CISD. Thank you again. Congratulations, Ms. Cresswell. We are so proud of you. Um, and I can assure you all, uh, when Ms. Cresswell talks about instruction and curriculum, she lights up. It's unbelievable her, her love for uh, what she gets to do every day as a principal, but now what she'll be doing and helping all of our principals. So we look forward to the great work that you will do working alongside Dr. Upshaw and Dr. Taylor. We know you. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Okay, and now to fill those big shoes at Colson Tough, um, we are fortunate to have great leadership and training in Conroe ISD. Um, we are continuously reinvesting in our um, future leaders, and we've been investing in Ms. Christy Julian for years, and she has worked um, for the past decade at Colson Tough as an assistant principal, and they have done great work at Colson Tough. And uh, under Ms. Cresswell's leadership, but Ms. Julian has played a very large role in that. And uh, she is part of that Colson Tough community. She's well known, she knows that community, and we know that she will serve it very well. So tonight, uh, I am honored to uh, make the recommendation for Ms. Christy Julian, current assistant principal at Colson Tough, to become the principal of Colson Tough. So, I'll, I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion by uh, Mr. Moore. It's properly second by Mr. Husbands. Uh, I did see you, Mr. Sanders. Been, he beat you to the punch. <laughs> With that being said, motion second. Gentlemen, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? No opposed, so motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Ms. Julian. I greatly appreciate um, the vote of confidence by the board. I'll hand it over to you, Dr. Noll. Okay. And now we will welcome Miss Julian to the meeting. There she is. Welcome, and you may now address the board. Mr. President, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, I, thank you so much for this honor to be selected to serve the staff and students and families at Colson Tuff Elementary as their next principal. Colson Tuff has been my school home for the last 10 years, as you mentioned, and I've enjoyed the experiences and interactions with I, I've had while serving this community as assistant principal. A K-6 campus is such a special place because you get to spend so many years with the students and their families, and you really do get to develop such strong relationships and bonds with all of them. 
there's nothing quite like quite as special as watching a student come in as a wide-eyed scared kindergartner and then walk out of your building and leave as a confident sixth grader. I'm thankful for the many amazing teachers and administrators that I've worked with throughout my 13 years in Conroe ISD, including Mr. Joe Daw over at Knox Junior High, um, Julie English while she was at Colson Taft, and of course, Mrs. Sean Cresswell. They've all been wonderful mentors and have provided encouragement, encouragement to me all along the way. It has been a blessing to collaborate with Sean over the last six years and her leadership and guidance have certainly set our campus up for future success. We will continue to make decisions that are best for all students so that they continue to learn, grow and excel, which just happens to be our motto we live by. To everyone in my Colson Taft family, I look forward to tackling the new adventures that lie ahead with, for us. Um, we're all in this together and we'll continue through all of this together. And to my personal family, my husband, Brett, um, and my kids are on a field trip to their grandparents tonight, <laughs> but we've got their picture just representing them. Um, my son, Tanner, who's a fourth grader this year at Colson Taft, Cooper is a second grader, and my little Ella, um, thank you to my parents for all of their support and Brett's parents through the years. Um, I appreciate all of the love that you guys have shown me while I work with teachers and students and continue that journey. Well, congratulations to you and your family. Um, well, the, well, the kids are on a field trip and you can go out and celebrate this evening. And That's so we, right. <laughs> we, we wish you well and congratulations. We are very proud. Congratulations, Ms. Julie. Congratulations. Thank you so Thank much you to all of you. Congratulations. congratulations. All right, that brings us to item six, uh, 7C, name principal of Wilkerson Intermediate. Dr. No. Yes, sir. We had a great leadership at Wilkerson for many years under the direction of Principal J.J. Dahl, and she has recently accepted a position in our human resources department that has created this vacancy. Um, Wilkerson is a very special campus. It's, it's got a long history. It's very proud, and so we, we wanted to find a candidate that could come in and make great connections with the students, bring a high level of energy um, and, and really you know, embrace the community. And we feel like we've done that um, tonight with our recommendation of Carlton Todd. Mr., uh, excuse me, Dr. Todd is the assistant principal currently at Cryer Intermediate. Uh, he has also worked uh, in the past at Travis Intermediate and uh, has proven himself over the years to be uh, a great relationship builder and he motivates children um, very well, but he also understands curriculum very well. And so we are confident that he is the right leader uh, for Wilkerson Intermediate. So I would, it is my pleasure to make the recommendation of Dr. Carlton Todd to be the principal of Wilkerson Intermediate. So moved. Second. Gentlemen, I, have a, I have a motion from um, trustee, Mr. Moore, the second from Skeeter Hubert. All right, Mr. Hubert got a second, a properly second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Uh, any opposition? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Dr. Todd. Outstanding. All right, and we will now welcome Dr. Todd to the meeting. Welcome, sir. Looky there. <laughs> yeah, so you got it. You have the crew. Welcome. We have a big family. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, we're glad you're all here. Else, and they all showed up. <laughs> President Williams, Board of Trustees, Dr. Noel, I am grateful and honored to accept the challenge to lead Wilkerson Intermediate School. Tonight, I'm joined by my beautiful wife, Key, who is a Conroe High graduate, and my daughter, Taylor. Also tonight, I have my mother, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, sisters, aunt, cousins, and my extended family. As I enter into this new chapter, I am forever blessed to have a wonderful support of my wife, Key. Thank you for always making my dreams your dreams and pushing me to excellence. Out of all my accomplishments, you are my greatest one. To my mentor, Dr. Tamika Taylor, you hired me in the district in 2013. Your words were, Carlton, you are destined for greatness. Continue to be teachable, humble, confident, and never let anyone take away your jovial spirit. It's contagious, and you will go far. Those words have forever been engraved in my heart. Thank you for your crucial conversations and leadership that led me to this moment. To my principal and friend, Dr. Medford, 
We've laughed together. We've cried together. We've traveled together. We've prayed together. And we transform a culture together. And we even got a doctorate out of all of this. We always talked about this day. And here it is. Thank you for choosing me to be your sidekick, partner in crime, and leaning post. Because of your leadership and support, I am not only ready, but I am prepared. To Mrs. Jennifer Daw, I count it an honor and a privilege to be your successor. What an amazing job and foundation you have prepared for me to follow at Wilkerson. I look forward to working with you and learning from you. To my Wilkerson Wildcats, the best is yet to come. Once again, thank you for entrusting me to lead Wilkerson Intermediate. Blessings. Congratulations. 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 Dr. Todd is a former Wilkerson Wildcat. I'll be watching. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I tell you what, you got you got a you got a hell of a support staff back there, man. I do, I do. So we make sure you you do your thing, and you got plenty of support to help you do exactly that and be successful with Wilkerson, man. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, all right. Next item, item seven E, name director of special. I'm sorry, we're back to D. Name principal of the Willems High School ninth grade campus, Doctor No. Yes, sir. Thank you. Once again, just to, to recap, uh, Jill Hauser, our previous principal of the Woodlands Nine, had moved to fill our vacancy for the principal of McCullough. And so that has created this vacancy at Woodlands Nine. And uh, as you know, ninth grade campuses are very important um, to what we do. That transition into high school is critical. Um, in addition to all of the testing that goes on uh, on the ninth grade campuses as well. Uh, and so to, to make that transition, we looked for someone that had uh, a strong background and has been a long time Highlander. She has been uh, in the Woodlands High School system for a long time. Um, I, I have known her since back in my day, uh, first starting to teach there. And uh, she is someone that I always admired, uh, has always done right by kids and uh, has great knowledge and instructional leadership experience. And I know that they will serve the Woodlands High School ninth grade very well. So tonight it is my honor to recommend to be the principal of the Woodlands High School ninth grade campus, Miss Deborah Shepard. I move I, we approve. I got a motion to approve uh, by uh, Trustee Mr. Sanders. Second. Like a second, probably mm -hmm. second by seemingly, seemingly Mr. Moore. Is that correct? I believe it was Mr. Inman. Okay, Mr. Dale Inman. Thank you, sir. Uh, motion second. Any discussion, gentlemen? Hearing no, no discussion, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Correct. Congratulations. Many congratulations to Ms. Shepard. Don't All right, know. and we welcome Miss Shepard to the meeting. I see her uh, joining us now. There's her beautiful family. Welcome, Miss Shepard, and congratulations to you. Hi, thank you. Thank you, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. I'm excited for the opportunity to lead the Woodlands High School ninth grade campus. I'm proud to say that I've been an educator in Conroe ISD for 24 years. During that time, I've worked for and learned from exemplary principals, including Dr. Don Stockton, Mr. Chris McCord, Mr. Greg Colshan, and Dr. Ted Landry. I'm particularly thankful for Mr. Colshan pushing me beyond my comfort zone and providing me my first leadership role. I would also like to recognize my mentor, Jill Hauser, from our early days of teaching teachers about technology to her guidance as an assistant principal. She's been there providing support as one of the most positive people I know. It's an honor to follow in her footsteps. Most importantly, I want to thank my family, including my parents, Dennis and Emily Malpass, for providing unconditional love and support, my sister, Dina Graves, for encouraging me to apply in Conroe ISD 24 years ago, and then again, encouraging me to apply for a chemistry position at the Woodlands High School in 2008. I especially want to thank my supportive husband, Stephen, and our amazing sons, Keaton and Noah, behind me, for their love and encouragement. The boys have grown up Highlanders, beginning with the Little Landers program at the Woodlands High School, and now Keaton will be a senior with the class of 2021, and Noah will be a junior at the Woodlands High in the fall. Tonight, they proudly sport their Highlander soccer polos. I look forward to serving the students and faculty of the Woodlands High School ninth grade campus while remaining part of the Woodlands High School family. It's the best of both worlds. Thank you again, and go Highlanders. Congratulations, Ms. Shepard. I thought you brought your bodyguards to the meeting. There. I wasn't sure. Uh, good looking crew you have. Uh, all Highlanders. So congratulations. 
Congratulations, Shepard. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations. All right. Item 7E. We're named director of special education 504. Dr. No. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, as you've seen tonight, we, we oftentimes uh, promote talent from within the school district, but there are those times when we uh, find opportunities to go outside of the district and bring new talent in. That's how we continue to get better and push ourselves um, forward. And we were doing that tonight with our special education director. Uh, Dr. Kendra Wiggins uh, currently serves Magnolia ISD, our neighbors to our west, as their special education director. And she has served in that role for, uh, I believe, seven years. And she comes with the highest recommendations from uh, both their superintendent, deputy superintendent, and uh, principals that we spoke to. Um, she also is actually the incoming president of the um, Texas Special Education Directors uh, Association. So she is well known throughout the state. Uh, we are confident that she can join us and she has big shoes to fill uh, with Teresa Cannon has done a wonderful job for us here in Conroe ISD. Uh, we wish her the best in retirement, um, but we are ready to take that next step. And I'm proud to recommend Dr. Kendra Wiggins to be our special education 504 director. So moved. We have a motion from Mr. Husbands. Second. I'll Got a second from Mr. Moore. Motion and seconded. Any discussion, gentlemen? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, outstanding. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Ms. Wiggins. I'll turn it over to you, Dr. No. All right, thank you. I'm watching to see. I'm sure that Sarah is currently trying to move Dr. Wiggins into our meeting. She's in transition, I believe, coming in over. She's in transition. Okay. That's a new Zoom term. We learned a new Zoom term, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> in transition. Uh -oh. Getting pulled into the meeting. Hey, here she comes. We see her now. All right. There we go. Dr. Wiggins, there you are. Well, congratulations. Welcome to uh, our Zoom meeting and welcome to Conroe ISD. We need to unmute you there. Let's see if we can get you unmuted. There we are. Oh, All right. There you are. Welcome. <laughs> Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is such an honor to be given the opportunity to serve as the Special Education and 504 Director for Conroe ISD. I am so grateful to be a new member of the Conroe ISD family, and I look forward to building on the successful foundation that the district has creating and meeting the needs of all students. I'm very excited to serve the students, staff, and families of this great district. I'm completing my 20th year in special education, and I not, would not be the educator that I am today if I did not have the support of God, many wonderful mentors, my parents who are watching via Zoom from Lubbock, my family, and most importantly, my husband, Frank, who is here, and my two children, Ethan and Sarah, who have always been there to support me and my dreams. So thanks again for this opportunity, and I look forward to meeting you all in person at some point and working with all of you. Well, welcome once again to Connor ISD. Like you said, hopefully we can all get to work here fairly soon face-to-face, uh, -face, and you can meet, meet the new team. Congratulations, Ms. Wiggins. Congratulations, Ms. Wiggins, Dr. Wiggins. Really appreciate looking forward to it. Sorry. Gentlemen, item 7F, named director of bilingual and ESL programs, Dr. No. Thank you, sir. Uh, once again, a celebration tonight of one of our own uh, who has done very well. Um, for the last many years, our coordinator of bilingual and ESL services has been Ms. Darren Carlisle. Um, this job is a, a very demanding job as we serve our students who are um, learning the English language, we support them from kindergarten all the way through, or pre-K, uh, all the way through high school. Um, there is quite a bit of responsibility that comes with this position through funding, uh, both grant funding and federal funding that comes through. And um, Ms. Darren Carlisle has proven through the years that uh, she can lead. She has created structures and models that are examples for other school districts to come in uh, and try to emulate. And so tonight it is an honor uh, that, that I would recommend to you that we give her the title of Director of Bilingual and ESL. All right. So moved. Gentlemen, 
I entertain a motion. Got a motion from um, Trustee Sanders. Second, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Moore made the motion. I'm sorry. <laughs> motion, Mr. Uh, Moore. Second, Mr. Husbands. All right, gentlemen, we have a motion and properly second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? No, no one opposes. So the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, uh, uh, Ms. Carlisle. Dr. Uh, no, back to you. Okay, and now we will see Ms. Carlisle join us. Here she comes. All right, welcome to the meeting, Mrs. Carlisle and Carlisle boys. Good to see you all. Hey, Brody, there you are. All right, make sure we get you in the shot. Welcome, Ms. Carlisle. Thank you, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. I want to thank you for allowing me this opportunity. It's a big responsibility, as you mentioned, Dr. Knoll, and one that I take very seriously. I'm so passionate about English learners and their families. I was one, and education completely changed the path of my life. I would also like to thank the people who work tirelessly in the bilingual ESL department. It is through your hard work and dedication that we're able to make a difference in our students' lives. Dr. Edith Upshaw, I wanna thank you for finding me and bringing me to Conroe ISD seven years ago, and most importantly, for believing in me. I would not be here if it were not for your leadership. My parents, who I think are watching, <laughs> thank you so much for being excellent examples of hard work. Last but not least, I want to thank my husband and my three amazing boys for allowing me to sacrifice time from them to do what I love the most. Thank you. Congratulations. Well deserved. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations, Carl. Carl. Congratulations awesome. Outstanding. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you, President Williams. That will conclude item seven, our human resources namings. That was awesome. I appreciate that, Dr. Noel. All right, and congratulations to all the new appoint, newly appointed uh, administrators. Uh, with that being said, we'll move to item three, administration. 3A, consider approval of application for the 2019-2021 uh, immediate aid to restart uh, school operations grant. Dr. Noel. All right, Dr. Hines will present this item. Good evening, President Williams, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Noel. Tonight, we request that the Board of Trustees authorize the district to submit an immediate aid to restart school operations grant application for the 2019 through 21 school years to the Texas Education Agency. The 2019 through 2021 immediate aid to restart school operations grant is part of the Federal Hurricane Education Recovery Act. And the purpose of the immediate aid to restart school operations grant program is to support local school districts with expenses related to the restart of operations in, the reopening of, and the re-enrollment of students in elementary and secondary schools that serve an area in which the federal government declared a major disaster related to designated 2019 flooding, which was Tropical Storm Imelda is included in this program, which was in 2019. You may have recalled that the TE grant is allocated based on uh, the district size and the Texas Education Agency published a list of allocation amounts by district. Uh, TEA has indicated that we are eligible to receive $1,944,983. These funds, if awarded, would be used to address identified expenses incurred by the district during the recovery from Tropical Storm Imelda, such as providing additional counselors, um, additional nurses aides to meet the needs of our students, as well as reasonable cost to transport displaced students, hardware, software for use in, uh, for technology for uh, use in tutorial and remedial programs, as well as supporting recovery efforts. The grant does not require any matching funds. And if the district is awarded funds under this grant program, the grant timeline will be uh, begin in March and runs through December 7th through 2021, we hum humbly seek your approval. Gentlemen, I entertain a motion. I move we approve as presented. Motion by Mr. Sanders, properly second by um, uh, Mr. Emman, Trustee Emman. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any uh, opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hines. Next item, uh, item B, 3B, consider uh, granting uh, authorization to submit a missed school days waiver 
to uh, TEA, Texas Education Agency. Dr. No. Yes, sir. Dr. Hines, once again, will present. Thank you, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Noll. And this is really kind of one of those housekeeping um, items that we have to do. Uh, we are seeking authorization from the Board of Trustees to submit a missed school days waiver application to the Texas Ed Education Agency. Uh, Conroe Independent School District was closed, well, a term called closed preparing for distance learning during the week following spring break. You may recall we came back from spring break. We were totally closed March 16th through the 20th, 2020 due to the COVID pandemic. Since then, the district has been in what status we call closed and instructing and we will continue to do so for the remainder of the 2019-20 school year in accordance with Governor Abbott's April 17, 2020 order. If the district's waiver is approved, students will not be required to make up the school days missed due to the pandemic, and the days completed via distance learning will be used to calculate average daily attendance and foundation school funding for the district. The district level planning committee approved this request to bring this waiver forward for your consideration on May the 11th, and we ask your approval. So moved. I have a motion, Mr. H Mr. Husbands. I second. second. I have a second, Mr. Sanders. Uh, gentlemen, do we have any discussions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Thank you. Um, next item, 3C, administration. Uh, receive information regarding the naming process for a new Conroe ISD campus. Dr. No. All right, Mrs. Blake Locke will be joining us and looks like she is sharing her presentation at this time. Good evening, President Williams, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Noll. It is my pleasure to present um, information. This is an information item only to you tonight about the school naming process for our newest campus. So this will be for Flex 20 and tonight, as you can see on the timeline, we are initiating the naming process um, then tomorrow, we will open up on our website uh, our form so that we can receive comments from the public, and we will receive name suggestions through June 12th. Then um, at our June board meeting, we will submit the full list of names to you for your consideration, and then we will come back on July 21st um, for your uh, presentation for your consideration of naming Flex 20. And so... Um, when naming facilities, since this is an elementary school, um, it can be named after a geographical area, prominent person or public official, uh, persons who've gained recognition in education or the arts, national or state heroes, or persons donating land or money for the facility. And this is in accordance with CW Local. This campus is a K-4 campus. And as you can see on the map, it is located just on the road from the Grangerland Milam complex. Um, on the south side of 3083, and it's um, in Granger Pines and part of a new development from Signorelli. And here is a rendering of this beautiful campus. And I present this to you for information only. So we'll be back at the next board meeting with more information for you. Thank you, Ms. Blake Law. All right, gentlemen, that concludes administration. Now we're down to four curriculum instruction and assessment. Uh, 4A, consider approval of application for 2020-2021 uh, Texas Education Agency Mentor Program Allotment Grant. Dr. No. Yes, thank you, sir. At this time, Dr. Edith Upshaw will make that presentation. We still got you on we mute, Dr. Upshaw. On One second. There. there we are. Okay, go for it. President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Noll. The 2021 Mentor Program Allotment Grant provides school districts the opportunity to build or strengthen beginning teacher mentor programs with a primary goal of increasing beginning teacher retention and its effectiveness. The Mentor Program Allotment is a competitive funding opportunity. If the district is awarded these fund, funds under the grant program, the district would receive approximately 1,800 per beginning new teacher who is assigned a quality mentor at each of the mentor program allotment grants participating campuses. If selected to participate in the grant, Conroe ISD will pilot this grant program at the following schools, Bosman Intermediate, Cox Intermediate, Creighton Elementary, Cryer Intermediate, Granger Line Intermediate, Houston Elementary, Hauser Elementary, Oak Ridge Elementary, Moorhead Junior High, Patterson Elementary, Pete Junior High, Rice Elementary, San Jacinto Elementary, Bogo Intermediate, and Wilkinson Elementary. 
These campuses were selected based on an internal needs survey that included data resources such as early reading indicators, teacher retention, state accountability results, campus culture inventories, and years of the campus principal experience. These funds if awarded would re be received by the school district in this fall semester in September of this year and will be used to provide mentors with stipends, release time, and also training opportunities for the staff. So with your permission, we would like to move forward uh, to apply for this grant. Thank you, Dr. Upshaw. So moved. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Husbands, a second by Mr. Hubert. Mr. Hubert, Mr. all right. Mr. Uh, Moore, any, any, all right, any discussion? I have a question. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Mr. Sanders. Dr. Upshaw, are there any matching funds required for this grant? There are not matching funds required for this grant. It's a needs-based grant. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. All right, any other discussion? No further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? No, here and no opposition. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Upshaw, greatly appreciate it. All right, let's continue on. We are in item uh, five now, planning and construction. Uh, uh, five. If we could do uh, 4B, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. 4B, okay. consider approval of application for the 2019-2021 TEA instruction con continuing con continuity of learning grant. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. Thanks Dr. Going. Debbie Phillips will make that presentation. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Nall. I'm here tonight to seek your approval to apply for the TEA Instructional Continuity of Learning Grant. This is a federal grant designed to provide supplemental resources to support improved student outcomes and increase the capacities of schools to facilitate instructional continuity and distance learning for students affected by the COVID-19 campus closures. Under this learning grant, Conroe ISD is eligible to receive up to $49,000 to support one or more of the eligible schools recommended by TEA. Based on several factors at this time, we intend to use the grant funds to target San Jacinto Elementary to support remote instruction and learning, as well as training for staff. We'll use the funds to purchase computers, connectivity solutions, hotspots, and software. The grant period runs through July 2021 and does not require matching funds. Unless there are any questions, we seek your approval to apply for this grant opportunity. So moved. Jim? Second. We have a motion properly. Second. Motion, I believe, by Mr. Sanders. I was Mr. Husband. Second by Mr. Sanders. Um, that being said, do we have any discussion? Here, no discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Here no opposition, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, so now item five, planning and construction. Uh, 5A, consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price amendment for the Woodlands College Park High School Classroom Edition Project. Dr. No. Yes, sir. We'll have Mr. Foster uh, joining us here shortly to present these items. All right, welcome, Mr. Foster. Looks like you are still muted. If you could unmute and you are good to go. All right, thank you, Dr. Noll. Uh, President Williams, members of the board, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval the guaranteed maximum price amendment for the Woodlands College Park High School Classroom Additions Project. So if you'll recall, this is a project resulting from our 2019 bond referendum. And back in February, we selected Marshall Construction as our construction manager at risk for this project. Since then, uh, Marshall, uh, Conroe ISD, and PBK, our architect, have been working together to develop the scope and plans and uh, project, take it to the marketplace for bidding. We've prepared a GMP totaling $12,047,460 for this project, and tonight we're requesting your approval. And I would like to point out that we did uh, just, we beat our budget target on the construction pr for this project, uh, and which was, you know, partly due to uh, some of the market swings we're seeing currently uh, due to the oil prices and things of that nature. But we are happy to report uh, under budget uh, GMP for your approval at this time. Outstanding. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Foster. Any, any, I'm sorry. Can I entertain a motion? I make a motion to accept Inman. I have a motion by Mr. Inman. I second the motion. Peter Hubert. Second by uh, Mr. Hubert. A motion second, properly second. Any discussion, gentlemen? Yes. Go ahead, uh, Mr. I read, Sanders. 
Mr. Foster, I read through the materials that was provided, but I'm still a little unclear about the total scope of work. Can you elaborate on that for me? So the, the major portions of the work are a classroom addition, which will be on the on the backside of uh, what is College Park High School. So you won't be able to see it from the roadway unless you drive around to the backside of the building. Uh, part of this scope or part of the scope of the project overall is also what we would consider the normal life cycle operations for a, a building of this age. So we're going through the auditorium, looking at lighting. We're going through the classrooms, looking at carpet. We're going through the building, looking at paint. We're upgrading safety and security systems throughout the building. We're upgrading the uh, fire alarm system to the uh, current code required voice evac system. We're adding the, the distributed antenna systems, the local digital antenna systems, the first responder antenna systems. Uh, so basically this is uh, uh, an opportunity for us to, to do the normal, uh, it's not really an overhaul, but it's, it's a facelift for a campus of this age uh, while we're there doing the building addition. And how many additional classrooms will be built? Uh, that is uh, a number that I'm I, I'm going to re recall from memory, but it is approximately 12 classrooms, if I'm not, not mistaken. Uh, there's several science labs, uh, several uh, plain classrooms, a uh, food lab uh, for the uh, the nutritional program, and the object here is to to replace uh, the portables that are on that campus. So we have uh, the net increase of classrooms. I believe is 12, which equals the number of portables that are that will hopefully be leaving that location. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Okay, gentlemen, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Foster. We're gonna continue on. Consider acceptance of Suchma Elementary School project. Dr. No, Mr. Foster. Yes, sir, Mr. Foster. All right, so uh, are we on item 5B, C. which is actually B, yes, sir, B. Oh, B, B, I'm sorry. <laughs> we skipped. All right, so B is uh, considering the acceptance of our district-wide safety and security upgrades projects. So if you recall from our 2015 bond referendum, we had a district-wide safety and security initiative, uh, which we completed in three phases. So in, in phase one, we went in uh, heavy on contingencies, not really knowing what to expect when we got to all the campuses as far as being able to conceal conduits and all the other things necessary to get to the access control upgrades and the camera upgrades in that building uh, or in the buildings district wide. So I'm happy to report uh, we did not materialize most of the contingencies we put in phase one. Uh, so we worked those contingencies through the, through the, throughout the project over across three phases. So uh, most of the, uh, the savings you're seeing reported were, were actually reported in phase one. We're formalizing those tonight, but we've been working with our finance department over the last uh, four years so that the money hadn't been sitting stagnant in a contractor's hands. We've been working on our side of the equation to make sure we got beneficial use of this money over the life of this project. So what we've uh, reporting tonight is the final cost of this project of $11,528,497.51, which is essentially right on the original budget target we set for that project uh, for construction in the 2015 bond referendum. What it does is reports a final allowance and return savings amount of $1,314,000. Uh, and that is, is essentially what we recouped after getting better after phase one and improving our processes moving into phase two and phase three. So at this time we're requesting your approval uh, and acceptance of the project as complete. Okay, gentlemen. I move we accept. A motion presented. by Mr. Sanders. Second by. Two second. Second. All right, Mr. Hubbard, second. Thank you, Mr. Hubbard. Motion properly second. Uh, any discussion, gentlemen? Hearing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, uh, Mr. Foster. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, next, item C, 5C, consider acceptance of such my elementary school project, Mr. Foster. At this time, uh, we bring forward for your consideration the acceptance as complete the Suchman Elementary project, which we uh, uh, lovingly referred to as uh, Flex 19 up until we named it uh, David and Sheree Suchma Elementary. So you can see a, a final project cost of $24,962,513, which is returning a, a savings amount of $23,606. And I would uh, like to point out that Suchman Elementary uh, incurred approximately 90 days of critical path delay relative to rain and other, other uh, nat natural incidences on that job site. 
And we were still able to open that school on time uh, for school to start in August of 2019, which it did without uh, any fanfare or issues from the student's perspective. And we're still able to return the $23,000 in savings to the district. So this time we request your approval uh, of and accepting this project as complete. So moved. We have a motion, Mr. Mr. Husband. I second. Second, Mr. Moore. I'm sorry, Mr. Sanders. A uh, motion second. Any discussion, gentlemen? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Foster. That That's item uh, 5C. We'll go into 5D, receive capital improvement update. Mr. Foster, please. I want to share my screen with, uh, with everybody for just a moment. So hopefully you can see my uh, presentation on the screen now. We're going to bring you up to speed wherever capital improvements we have going on throughout the district. And we're going to start with uh, one as soon as my computer catches up. Stockton Junior High School. So Stockton Junior High School is scheduled to open in August of uh, this coming August uh, for students when they return from the summer break. Uh, as you can see from the picture uh, you're looking at here, uh, outside the building, it is rapidly approaching completely completion. As you can see, the trees and landscaping going in. On the inside of the building, uh, we've been working from the far end of the building towards the camera in this shot. So you can see the flooring making its way through the uh, main street corridor of the campus. Uh, you can see the, the commons area is nearing its completion. Uh, the gym and athletics facilities are nearing their completions. The hallways, lockers, things of that nature are looking fantastic as well. So we're looking to receive uh, furniture in June. Uh, we're looking to receive the admin staff in July, and we're looking to receive uh, students in August uh, on schedule as we planned. Moving on to flex school number 20 in the Candy Creek feeder zone, which we just started the naming process tonight uh, with your, your, uh, the information out of Ms. Blake like presented. So you can see from our picture overhead, the neighborhood is also developing around us, but we're almost complete with the paving and the flat work around the uh, the building, uh, by the end of June, we should have all of the driveways access to the streets and the parking lots in place. Our first uh, slab pour is this week. So the blue you're seeing in the middle of the, uh, the middle of the paving is the grade beams and foundation infrastructure as it's being completed around the building. Uh, steel is scheduled to deliver uh, next week and start going vertical. So the next uh, board presentation, we should see some vertical construction. Flex 20 is scheduled to open August of 21, and I'm happy to report it is currently on schedule. So uh, unfortunately, we're done with pictures for the time being. So, But what we have done since our last board, I mean, we've mobilized at Washington Junior High School for the conversion to Washington High School. So what's happening over the course of the next couple of weeks is we're starting the roofing uh, work on that that's needed on that building and working with custodial and the campus to, uh, as they close down the year to pack up the, uh, the uh, teachers' uh, classrooms uh, and working beginning work in June. Uh, earnestly to make the conversion to Washington High School. Currently, the project is on schedule and looking to start uh, really working hard on June right after the current school year is over. We have also mobilized at Runyon Elementary uh, for the PE classroom additions. Uh, this project is taking advantage of the smaller population on the campuses currently. Uh, we are working outside, but they've done some demolition. They're setting up the fencing. Our maintenance department uh, has moved the portables out of our way, of, out of the way of construction, as uh, reconnecting them for use by the school during the course of the construction. Uh, it is currently on schedule, and uh, we looked uh, to start the work on the foundations and the infrastructure for the buildings uh, in June once the normal class uh, class times for the normal school year are over at the end of this month. At York Junior High School, we are in a very similar position uh, where the contractor is taking advantage of a reduced population on that campus. So we've been able to mobilize, set up the fencing. Again, our maintenance department has moved uh, the portable buildings out of the way of construction. Uh, so they're currently working through the demolition and, and the, the surgical demolition of the masonry walls along the backside of the building that will allow us to add the uh, new classrooms and new athletic spaces and new fine arts spaces that are part of this project. So the, and just like running in June, we anticipate the uh, excavations for the foundations and that work to be uh, undertaken so that we can take delivery of the steel and hopefully get that uh, project in vertical construction before the students return in August. 
Now our campus renovations project for 2020 uh, is also started. We've been really holding the contractor back on this one because a lot of the work is inside of Glenlock Elementary and we're still using that campus uh, with uh, staff and admin for the building as we're in our distance learning mode currently. Uh, but the contractors mobilized on the site. The equipment that we approved at the board a couple of months ago has begun arriving uh, in the district and on that site. And they're doing all the prep work and fab work in the parking lot, essentially, getting ready for school to end at the end of May so that in June we will start in earnest on the inside of that building, getting that uh, project underway. We're also uh, starting the work to repave the long bus driveway that serves uh, Wilk Kirsten, the Woodlands Transportation Center in Knox Junior High School. That work should be mobilizing over the next week or so. As well, we're mobilizing with Kaufman Elementary to increase their bus or their parent uh, stacking area where the parents will stack uh, in the morning and afternoon during uh, arrival and dismissal. Those projects are all on schedule and proceeding uh, just as we would anticipate them to for a project of this magnitude. Uh, the project will be complete for, for on, in all locations for school to start in August. Moving on to our safety and security project 2020, uh, and this is a, a project we've actually been able to get a head start on, so to speak. So the work at safety and security is largely unseen, so the contractors can work in the evenings and weekends and do a lot of the wiring and the infrastructure uh, that will help us continue to upgrade our security systems, our access control systems, our camera systems. Uh, and then this summer we'll begin working on improvements to the secure vestibules and things of that nature. Uh, geographically speaking, we're in, uh, generally speaking, in East County uh, for this for 2020. We'll be on this project through the end of 2020, and then 2021 we'll be bringing you another installment as we take the, the 2021 version of safety and security and move on throughout the district. And so that is our update. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Um, all right, gentlemen, uh, let's move on. We're in uh, item six. Business finance receive financial report. Uh, Dr. No, Mr. Rice. Yes, um, uh, Ms. Karen Garza will be joining us to make that presentation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. Garza, how are you? All right, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. No, it is my pleasure this evening to present the financial statements for the month ended April 30th, 2020. Our first statement this evening is the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows the district's assets, liabilities, and fund balance for the general fund, the debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Taking a look at our largest asset on the balance sheet for the general fund, we have cash on hand of $500, investments in the state pools of $165.5 million, our short-term investments $44.6 million, our investments with Wood Forest National Bank $76.2 million, and our longer term investments with TCG, $52 million for total cash and investments in the general fund of $338.8 million. The next statement is our income statement. The income statement shows the district's revenues and expenditures. Our revenues come from three major sources, local, state, and federal. Taking a look at our expenditures by major object in the general fund, payroll is our largest expense at year to date, $259.3 million. In debt service, our debt service payment at 74.8 million year to date. In child nutrition, supplies and materials at 7.5 million. And in self-funded insurance claims. Taking a closer look at our local revenue, um, our largest generator in the, in the general fund and debt service fund is of course tax revenue. In child nutrition, our food sales will remain at 6.2 million for the year as there is no longer food sales in the cafeterias due to the closure and in self-funded insurance premium contributions of $33.8 million. Self-funded insurance, April was a much better month for the plan. Total revenue of roughly 4.1 million, total expense of roughly 3.5 million for net income of 608,000 for the month. Our year-to-date net income is at 193,000. Uh, participation at the wellness centers was down in April. We did anticipate that due to the limitation in the types of visits due to COVID-19. Our average visitation for the year is at 506. Our investments as of April 30th, our par value is 592.7 million. Our pools are yielding 1.28. Our investments with Wood Forest are yielding 0.36. Our short-term investments have a WAM of 172 days, yielding 1.55. Uh, 
And our longer term investments with TCG, a WAM of 438 yielding 1.96. And our combined portfolio yielding 1.21 with a WAM of 47 days. Our yield to maturity uh, benchmark is the 90 day T-bill and that is yielding 0.085. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garza. Greatly appreciate that. All right, gentlemen, any discussion or questions, concerns? For Ms. For Ms. Garza? All right, thanks, outstanding. All right, gentlemen, now we're at item eight, uh, executive session. I'll go ahead with the closed session uh, reading. Is that okay, Dr. No? Yes, sir. All right, a closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by sections 551.071, 551.072, and 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Uh, should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any action considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be held, uh, shall, be, shall be at either A, the public meeting upon reconvening of this public meeting, or B, at a subsequent meeting, public meeting of the board notice upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 7.06 p.m. Good evening. Um, the board is now in open session at 8.40 p.m. Um, next item on the agenda, we want to adjourn the meeting of the Conroe Independent School Board of Trustees at 8.40 p.m. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.